few years ago, I had a, a really lovely evening. I went for a, a long walk down the river in Cambridge, Massachusetts, near where I live, with a dear friend of mine. And this was a dear friend, I don't know if you have friends in your life with whom you frequently laugh so much you cry. You know those people where you just kind of get giggling and suddenly you're both weeping because it's so ridiculous? This is my friend Kathleen. And I was particularly glad to see Kathleen that evening because in the, the couple of years before then, as she and I had been walking together in friendship, she just had a really rough couple of years. She'd had a, a romantic relationship that had, had gone off course. She'd had some frustrations at work. She'd just been through a, a hard season of life. And as we walked down the river, she was filling me in on how things were going. And I was delighted because everything in her life was going really well. Things were so much better at work. She was dating this delightful man who actually kind of deserved her. And we were having just a lovely chat. And I, I got home that night and I said to my husband, Brian, so nice seeing Kathleen this evening. Her life is going so well. That was Thursday night. On Sunday morning, I woke up to an email from our pastor telling me that Kathleen had been assaulted as she had walked home from the, the train station the night before. She'd been walking down a sort of dark path talking to her lovely boyfriend and she had been hit over the head, um, she'd had her bag stolen, and she'd been left to bleed out by the side of the path. Our pastor was emailing to, to let me know that she was in, in hospital, um, and that he thought I'd I probably like to, to know that to visit her. And when I got to the hospital that morning, um, Kathleen was still unconscious, and it seemed like it was unclear if she was gonna have brain damage, but she certainly had severe damage to one of her eyes to where she would likely never see out of that eye again. That afternoon, I, I went back hoping that I would see her conscious, and her, her dad had flown in. And her dad said to me, I'm so glad that you're here, because when Kathleen comes round, you can tell her that God was really protecting her last night. Because if she hadn't been on the phone to her boyfriend when she was attacked, he wouldn't have been able to, to raise an alarm. If, if a random stranger hadn't happened to walk by not long afterwards, she would almost certainly have died. And God was protecting her and providing for her that she made it to hospital in time. My fir first thought was what beautiful faith this man has. And my second thought was, when my friend comes around, I don't think I can tell her that God was protecting her last night because if God had been protecting her, she wouldn't have been attacked. I don't know what you have been through in your life thus far or what you will go through as your life proceeds, but I'm willing to bet that at some point in your time on this earth, you will find yourself in a situation where you just don't understand why God has not stepped in. And as I've reflected on those situations in, in my life and those situations in the lives of those I love, the passage in the Bible that I always come back to is John chapter 11, part of which we had read today. And if you, if you imagine that passage as just a sort of newspaper article, the headline news would be, forgive the spoilers for those who've never read it, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. But actually, the story is so much more than that. It begins with Mary and Martha, two of Jesus' closest friends, sending him a message. And the message reads like this, Lord, the one you love is sick. Not Lazarus, not our brother, but the one you love. Now Mary and Martha are clearly deeply worried about their brother's state of health, but they know the greatest healer in town. They're gonna send a message to Jesus and surely he will drop everything and come. And then John tells us that when Jesus got their message, he didn't come. In fact, he deliberately waited until Lazarus was dead. But if you look closely in, chapter, in verse five of John 11, you'll find that John re-emphasizes that Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus. It's very confusing. We would understand if it said Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus, so he dropped everything and went as soon as he got their message. We would understand if it said 
Jesus honestly didn't care that much about Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and he was busy doing other stuff, and so he thought he wouldn't come. But no, John tells us that Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and so he didn't come. He waited until Lazarus was dead and buried, and then he showed up. Martha comes out to meet him first. And she says those haunting words to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give you. Do you hear this woman's faith? Her brother is dead and buried and she still thinks that Jesus can help her. Your brother will rise again, Jesus replies. Now, many Jews of Jesus' day believe that at the end of time, God would raise his faithful people from the dead, and Martha seems to be somebody who believes this as well. She says, yes, Lord, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day, but you can almost hear the disappointment in her voice. What about now, Jesus? What about now? Why won't you help me now? And then Jesus looks into this grieving woman's eyes and he says some of the most extraordinary words ever spoken on this planet. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even though who dies will live and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Martha in that moment thinks that her greatest need is for Jesus to raise her brother from the dead. But Jesus says no. Your greatest need is me. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me has life, even if they're dead. And anyone who doesn't believe in me is dead, even if they look like they're alive. It's very easy for us, if we're followers of Jesus, to fall into the trap of seeing him as a means to an end. I don't know what your circumstances are like right now, but maybe you're in circumstances that, that press you to, to cry out to the Lord in prayer. And your, your hope is that the Lord will fix your circumstances. Now, don't get me wrong, we, we absolutely should be calling out to the Lord in our need, with our prayers. But what if in, instead of the Lord needing to fix our circumstances, what if actually our circumstances are just what we needed to make us cry out to the Lord. Because you see, if Jesus had healed Lazarus, we know from the Gospels, by the way, Jesus can heal people at a distance. He didn't even need to come. He could have said the word and Lazarus would have been well. So why does he delay? I think partly to have this conversation with Martha when he can say to her then and to us now, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? There have been moments in my life when I have put myself, so to speak, in Martha's shoes, looking into Jesus' eyes, hearing those words of him, and asking myself, do I believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Or am I just seeing him as a means to an end, a sort of eternal insurance policy? Because if it is true If it is true that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, then whatever you're going through right now, whatever you will go through one day, however disappointing your life on this earth feels, it's just not going to matter in the end. And if it is not true, then your life doesn't matter anyway, and nor does mine. We're nothing but atoms and molecules with a delusion of selfhood. Martha responds, yes, Lord. I know you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. And then Mary comes out, throws herself at Jesus' feet and says the same thing. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus asked them to take him to Lazarus' tomb. Now, John tells us that there are many who'd, who'd come to mourn with Mary and Martha for their brother. And Mary and Martha, along with these, these friends, are are weeping and lamenting for Lazarus. And and we read this very short and highly confusing verse. Jesus wept. Now, some of the people who see Jesus crying, they say, look how much he loved Lazarus. And other people say, well, wait a minute. 
couldn't he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have stopped this man from dying? The answer is yes. And yet, Jesus weeps with Mary and with Martha in their pain. Friends, it is not the case that God doesn't care about our suffering. Your suffering and mine, it matters to God so much that it brings tears to the eyes of the Son of God. In fact, we can count on Jesus being with us in our suffering, in our pain, holding us close, especially in those moments in life when we feel like everything is falling apart. We can count on Jesus to weep with us when we weep even though he knows the end of the story. Jesus tells them to take the stone away from Lazarus' tomb, and Martha points out the sort of awkward fact. She says, Lord, at this point, there's going to be a, an odor. Lazarus' body is, is entombed and decaying. Jesus says, roll the stone away. And then he shouts out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And John tells us that the man who was dead came out. Friends, if we only had a Jesus who could weep with us in our pain, that would be something, but it wouldn't be enough. You and I would still be left to to rot and, and decay in our graves for all eternity. But the same Jesus who wept with Mary and Martha is also the Jesus who had the power to call their brother out of the grave, and he walked out with his grave clothes on. A few years ago, my, my daughters were five and seven. We were driving past a, a cemetery. And one of my daughters said, Mom, isn't that the place where all the dead people are? And I said, yes. And my other daughter said, oh, that's gross. And I said, don't be too superior. You'll be in one of those graves one day. <laughs> but I said, if you have put your trust in Jesus, then one day he will call you out of your grave. Miranda, come out. Eliza, Come out, and you and I, my friends, will walk out of death into resurrection life with him. And there is literally nothing that will ever matter more than that. Our lives on earth here can feel like they're long. They're exceedingly short. It can be so easy for us to get consumed with the things that are happening here and now. There is a right way for us to attend to that. But it's so easy for us to get distracted and to start believing that actually the here and now is all there is. Brothers and sisters, we are running toward eternity. We are running into the arms of the Son of God who loved you and me so much he was willing not only to become one of us but to die in our place. We're running towards the one who is the resurrection and the life. Will we believe that? My friend Kathleen did eventually come round. Thankfully, she didn't have any significant brain damage. But she has lost the sight in one of her eyes. Delightfully, a couple of months later, her lovely boyfriend who actually deserved her, proposed to her. But I would say even more delightfully, she wrote a letter to the people who were in charge of sentencing the 16-year-old who had assaulted her, asking, would they please give him the most lenient sentence possible? Because my friends, if we have been forgiven and embraced and restored by Jesus. We are then filled with a capacity to love and to forgive that none of us would have. I saw that flowing out of Kathleen as she wrote that letter. And my hope is, if I find myself one day in a situation that calls for radical forgiveness, that instead of holding on to hurt myself, I would give it up to Jesus 
I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this?